Hey, Steve. Andy, what's going on? Hey there. Thank you, Scott. Uh, hello, everybody. Hello, Andy. Hey, Steve. Hey, Scott. Hi, everybody. All right. So welcome to another week. They fly by. Uh, but here we are in the week, month of August. Got the uh, month and date correct here today. So let's get started. Seems like we've got the usual crowd and the usual, usual people will start to file in after the next few minutes here because they know that we go through a few of these disclaimer slides. Primarily the legal one that reminds you that uh, we're a software company and we're going to talk about some market related issues, but uh, anything you see or hear should not be construed as financial advice for you. We are not allowed to give out financial advice because we didn't take the right tests. So keep that in mind. And that's 17, 15 years now. Um, I'm one of the original users and so is Andy. It's been a long time. We've seen a lot of versions um, continually improving on each other, but uh, for somebody new, it's not really going to be easy to learn in just a few days. Um, Scott and uh, the gang, we're going to talk about the test drive that we have coming up next week, which is a way to get five days of uh, pretty much unlimited use of the entire platform. Um, and a lot of people use that to springboard forward and maybe take another month to follow through because my point is it's very hard to learn the program even in five days. But the test drive is a great appetizer, an uh, entree, you know, for those that find great value and interest, which most do, and then I can go from there. So the point being is that we try to do our best to onboard people and give them as much education as possible, recognizing the learning curve is steep and try and help you with that learning curve. And so uh, we've got a lot of webinars. Um, helped Jamie yesterday. We're, doing the Tuesday afternoon one now. Dan and Brad talk tomorrow about what's coming down the road. <clears throat> Trading studio on Thursday with Andy and Jamie. Market observations dictate what they talk about. And then on Friday, we don't have a webinar, but we have a three-hour support session where you can pull up a chair and ask us questions in the same format that we have right here. Go to meeting. You can ask questions and um, get responses. It is a great, um, hang on a second. It is a great uh, way to get up to speed quickly and you've got four of us there on Fridays and we'll either demonstrate for you uh, in real time or we can type out the answer as well. Um, hang on one second, I got a reply here. Oops. All right, so uh, that slide is down. The TI University is something we do in the mornings to help people again get up to speed quickly. You know, it's a four day course starting starting with beginner content on Mondays and ending up with more advanced stuff on Thursdays. You know, we're noticing a lot of people join the first few days like Monday, Tuesday, and maybe start to dwindle off Wednesday and Thursday uh, because they got the information they needed. But that just tells us that, you know, you guys are getting the information that you want. So it's a live event every Monday through Thursday. We also have a recorded version for those that want it. So that brings us to the uh, Somebody's asking if we help traders in Australia. Well, Vaughn, we only have U.S. stocks, so we can help any trader. If they're in Australia trading U.S. stocks, well, then sure, we can help. So man and machine combined is the theme I like to start with, just to remind people technology is going to be our friend going forward. And trade ideas, whether you're using the AI to give generated ideas out of the ether, or if you're using the configuration window to combine your own custom strategies, the technology is there to work together with us. Um, it's not their design for us to turn our back on it and expect to go make deposits at the bank. It's there to help us combine the knowledge that we have as discretionary humans uh, and the technology is there to curate the ideas and show us the best of the best ideas and we take it from there. So I always like to remind people that and Paul Tudor Jones, a great trader who by the way called this gold rally, over two months ago, he nailed it. Uh, big hedge fund guy, kind of keeps a low profile as the good ones do. But he reminds people that no man is better than a machine and no machine is better than a human with a machine. So human and machines together is where it's going to be. All right, so uh, some thoughts on today's content. Uh, market uh, for August 6th. Market recap, uh, just whoopsie, it's probably a good all caps way to scream at what's been happening. We certainly have some thoughts, Andy and I both, on the market recap. Uh, Holly was a very quiet AI today, and I'm sure Andy's going to 
point that out. There was really no cues as well, no real market direction, directional bias, low trade count, uh, quick hits, you know, risk off, but he'll demonstrate that. Trade of the week this week was one that was interesting. We'll talk about it when we get there, but boy, there were just so many setups. If you read the email, way too many setups to even contemplate trying to sift through them all because the market put itself, pulled itself back to a very interesting level. Uh, so we'll talk about the trade of the week, which did not trigger. It very well could still trigger. And we'll talk about um, maybe some updated ideas as to where that setup is, um, the stock being um, GPK. Um, Andy and I are going to talk to, and we're going to take this opportunity this week to talk about how to adapt to volatility, maybe a couple stories, a couple of concepts to keep in mind in navigating a very volatile market. Um, and then uh, we will try and find some alerts. I shouldn't say try. There's definitely some out there, but it's going to, again, come back to what we're going to talk about in the market recap. It's going to depend on the backdrop of what is the bigger picture going to do. If the market wants to hold itself together, then there's some decent setups out there. If we're not done selling, well, then those setups uh, will fall victim to the bigger picture and the bigger draft. Uh, if we find some time at the end, we can do a couple chart requests. There might be a couple people out there who want to look at a chart, but I have a feeling a lot of them are going to kind of look the same. But um, nonetheless, if we have time, we can certainly do that as well. All right, so let's get my pen. I'm going to do what I did yesterday with Jamie's. And then there's some re repeat people in here as well. Okay, so what I've done is I've already backed up a few days because obviously this is not what our market looks like. This is what it looked like when we spoke last week and I was parroting the same thing. Oh yeah, the no bear case in sight. There's no bear case to be made. Now, if there was a bear case, we would want to see these moving averages hold, I mentioned. Uh, and most importantly, remember what this line is, this is the prior high of the S&P. And so this back here acted as future support, acted as some resistance there. So it was a perfect pivot level from which we can kind of gauge what's happening. And so I had said, we don't want to lose a closing candle to this line. We can take probably some spikes as usual, maybe a test here and there. But let's go ahead and uh, zoom in and roll the candle forward, roll the camera forward, click one day. Oh, the very next day we spoke, we had this crazy, believe it or not, it was an outside day, but just a few pennies created a new high and a new low covered up the prior day. We called it an engulfing candle. And in this case, the engulfing candle was red colored. Might have been a bit forewarning. Go forward another day, and all of a sudden we've tested within two days of talking about no bear case, but keep an eye on this pivot level. What happened? We tested that pivot level through it during the day, but for the most part, the algos or the market participants, I'll say, decided that we should close the closing prices that day right at that pivot level. Well, it wasn't a close below until well, the next day, then this was essentially Friday. This was the data that we had to go on going into the weekend for the trade of the week. Three huge solid days of downward volume, uh, volumes there of course, but the downward momentum. A nice spike through the 50 day moving average. So it was really shapely. I mean, uh, it was kind of textbook almost with the S&P. However, the big problem as mentioned, we all of a sudden have a closing candle below this significant pivot level. And I would say that that supersedes any sort of false support you might see here because as we all know, very next day was yesterday, overnight weekend futures, bad news, China, whatever you want to call it, really punished um, anybody who tried to lean on these levels back here when I think again, more importantly, we closed below a very significant pivot point and then the news just somehow seemed to follow the way it always seems to do. Um, and so this was yesterday, uh, big spike down. We closed off our lows. That's their favorite thing to say on CNBC is we closed off our lows. And then today we gapped up, but that doesn't really tell the whole story. This market went a lot lower last night. If you watch the futures, um, it went a lot lower last night and uh, started to recover nicely and gave us kind of a, a nice futures V bottom technical bounce. Can't really see it on this chart, You're looking at daily candles of an ETF. But if we were to look at the, the futures, you'd see a nice V bottom in there. And so nonetheless, we did gap up. Um, I hesitate to call that a pro gap because it was almost like a relief gap after a very overextended downside. Uh, we kind of needed that. 
but we got it nonetheless. So I don't really think this tells us anything necessarily. Um, it just tells us it was time for a relief after this incredible downward volume and volatility. What I am going to say is we have a couple more days, and in a couple days, these moving averages are going to start to be really in play, I'm telling you. And I think by the time we get to the weekend, where the rubber is going to hit the road is what we've talked about before. You know, is it, it, are the next few days, if, you know, I'm not saying what's going to do this, but all likelihood and my experience kind of tells me this is what the next in interest level of interest point inflection point whatever you want to call it we could very easily bounce back into the re declining moving averages which some people call it bouncing into the pocket and it's a whole different move it's a whole different animal than it was you know back here higher highs and higher lows following the moving averages supporting the price all of a sudden the moving average is coming down to meet the price as we possibly dead cat bounce up and into it so i'll be watching for a possible dead cat bounce and see what happens here and if everything goes as it looks like, that could take us right into the weekend, which would probably leave a lot of people scratching their heads for the weekend. Um, I was going to back out, unless you want to add anything before I back out to the monthly candles, Andy. No, go right ahead. Okay, so let's just see, you know, we, we look at this in this context, but what does that mean really in the bigger picture? So let's tell the story. Let's go back way out. I can go to the monthly. Well, the first thing I noticed when I looked at this monthly, something kind of struck my attention, and that is the last 12 months, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, we've had some pretty, you can probably even include the last 18 months for that matter, we've had some really interesting, wide, volatile monthly candles. I mean, compared to what we had, um, you know, coming into here, this is all this is all 2017, just a nice, simple, orderly move. So, that's 17, 2017 to 2018. Well, no, all I'm saying is if you, it, it was pretty tame oh. in 16 as well. That's right. what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So all of a sudden, the last 16, last 16, 18 months, we've had a lot of highs to lows. Um, that's an incredible, it doesn't take much to see the difference between these two years here. Um, that's a big difference in volatility of the two candles. Now, let's zoom out a little bit even more, just really put this in perspective. It's been quite an interesting market. And when we look at the damage that was done in the bigger picture, it's really not that much damage. Um, mm -mm. The spike down here correlated to the 50 month moving average, we would call that interesting place to bounce. Mm -hmm. And if we correlate that and downshift into a weekly candle, that level was also a very significant point, a 200 week moving average about, this is about as textbook really as you can make it a 200 week moving average. So um, again, here's, the movement down now if this was a friday candle we'd be maybe having a different story i don't know what the candle's gonna look like maybe it'll look a little even better but the week hasn't finished is is my point and so we have to see what that candle looks like but for the most part oops um it seems like you know we're kind of in the general vicinity here we might have breached it a little bit with that wick there maybe the market can recover right back there on that trend line as we go into the weekend and i don't know beyond there that's just too many chess moves down the board but from a weekly perspective, we can see that uh, that pivot line that was breached, big, bad, ugly weekly candle, uh, taking it out and closing below it. Uh, we'll see what resolves. So as I go back to the daily candle, anything you want to add? No, I, I agree, Steve. I warned uh, people uh, last Thursday, I, I mentioned those two big red bars we had in a row to kind of start this move was done on very, very uh, big volume. And so any time that you have you know that kind of fear because and i was explaining remember these charts and they're they're basically um a, a graph that shows fear and, and greed you know it's, it's human emotions you're looking at here sometimes there, there's and, complacency right there yeah exactly yeah so you know be careful and and obviously yeah we went we got a lot uglier i you know we'll see what happens uh, I think if you have some macro news, who knows? Uh, I, I, it's hard to say. I don't try to put, you know, pick what news is if news is causing this or just normal market action. I always treat it as normal because you, you know, you don't know how news really affects price action a lot of times. But, um, yep. but anyway, yeah, I, I agree with Steve. It's a, it's a possible scenario. Uh, if we don't, and we just go sideways here, or it could get it could get real ugly fast. We could have a go pause go, but that kind of a weird pause there. I'll tell you, if we go sideways, that would be even kind of more bearish to me. 
just mm -hmm. waiting, yeah. waiting for the waiting for the doom of what's going to come down and, and meet it. Um, Bulls would like to see a lot more vigorous movement up and to meet these, up to meet the fight up here, the inevitable fight right. that's coming. I just don't know when it's coming, but that's going to be the day that might tell us the story how that how that day closes when they, when they do meet. We'll see for the day after actually. Yeah. And 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 also keep in the back of your mind, it's it's a different market a lot of times to the uh, to the downside. You, it's not so well orchestrated like a lot of times you have to the bullish side where you get these nice little pullbacks and everything. It's kind it's of like crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this could yeah. The, you know, be careful because yeah, patterns can get really out of whack on the downside. <laughs> All right, so moving through to the queues, I think you know they had a bit more. Um, uh, Cues on Friday. I'm gonna go back to Friday last week. Both the Nasdaq and there's the S&P right there, and then the Nasdaq and the Qs both had that nice bounce off the 50. I think probably probably faked out a lot of people who were really conditioned to buy the dip. Won't mention any names, um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think that faked out a lot of people that big gap down, and it hurt. Uh, Nasdaq, as far as let's take another look here. S&P's got close to their highs on. I'm gonna show you later why I think that. Well, I'll show you in a minute why I think that is. And then the Nasdaq. Not quite took out highs and kind of retreated off of them. The Dow, interestingly enough, was the only one yesterday that pierced. Look at where the 200-day moving average is down here. A lot of space going on there in the Dow and the S and P, and in the Nasdaq also a lot of space. But interestingly, over in the Dow, D I A E T F, we had kind of a beautiful little bounce off the 200-day. Um, so that was kind of interesting. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, so, and then last year, the lagger, IWM is below all the moving average. This guy's just waiting to see what everything else is gonna do. It had, mm -hmm. no, it had no interest in trying to help this market lead the way. It had every opportunity to help the market kind of lead the way when it broke out, tried to break out back there, but didn't, it failed. And now it's just dropped into no man's land under the 200 days. So this thing is on the downside. Now, before I finish the segment, I think one of the reasons the S&P is um, so, strong is there's a financial component in there that's not in the NASDAQ. If we look at the XLF today, look at that. That's a strong candle. So mm -hmm. I kind of went through the sectors before we spoke. I'm not going to go through all of them, but XLF kind of caught my eye. Bounced off the 200-day yesterday and closed on highs with a nice green candle, which means there was a lot of price travel you know, through the day. So um, that's why I think the S&P closed a little bit nicer than a technology-heavy um, NASDAQ. We'll see if there's any follow-through on that, though. But um, that's all I kind of have on the market observations. We're going to talk a little bit more about how to navigate um, some thoughts we've had, how to help navigate with some simple rules and some concepts in this crazy environment. Because this is this environment is not going to go away. Tomorrow could be just as volatile as today and, and, and Monday was. We'll see. All right. That's all I got. All right. All right, so let me just, grab. Just saying before we were just saying he used Andy's suggestion of SDS as a hedge. Yes, when Andy talks about using as a hedge, exactly. And so Jeff managed to use the SDS. Oh, good job, Jeff. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Good job. You probably got a lot of bang for that too. All right, let me grab him here. Let's see. Mm -hmm. And honestly, guys, there's not going to be a lot to talk about today. I mean, it's just uh, it's the market we have. Once again, let's let's take a look at the spy. Uh, even though you know we had a little bounce later in the day and closed uh, near highs at highs, let's call it. Uh, it wasn't an easy path to get there. Gap up, you know, spent a majority or half the day anyway below the open. And then finally, there toward the close, we you know got above the open and, and went a little bit higher, but still. Looking at this daily uh, and looking at our trade count, we had a total of eight trades a day. That's that's below, well below average. It's about half of what I would usually average around 15 to 20. So more than half, you know, lower than uh, average. So, uh, you know, I, I'm not even going to go through them, guys. I mean, I'll, I'll scroll through here and you can see Holly gave everything a chance. I uh, looked at a lot of the trades. Uh, she stayed in them for a while, but uh, got out for just very small, very small losers. There's Holly Neo. Let me go to Holly Grail real quick. And unfortunately, yeah, I don't have, I'm on my laptop today and I haven't downloaded the most recent version where I can show all of them. 
but it's not going to take me a long time to go through them real quick. Here's Holly Grail. Now, my totals are based on risking $200 per trade, uh, based on 100 shares per trade. So, is that right, Steve? Yeah. So you can see, very, very small losses. Holly got out uh, of all, all our trades uh, and risk off at the right time, and a lot of them did turn uglier. I mean, I wish I could go in here and find uh, you know something to really brag about, but it's just one of those days. Let's take a look at 2.0. 2 and kind of the same thing there, just uh, just not a whole lot to talk about today. And you know what? It, uh, it makes sense, itself. Uh, guys. Remember, yeah. Well, here's what here's what you have to think about. We we build a lot. We build the, the the base strategies for Holly. A lot of the traders do here. We have to we give her something to work with, and then she takes these strategies and she uh, she keeps the base parameters, and then she runs you know, through runs everything through the gauntlet with all these other filters and all and everything. So, but if the base strategies, which we use a lot of daily chart patterns when we build these base strategies, if they're all out of sorts, all out of whack, uh, not even the base strategies are gonna line up. Remember, you have to have all the stars lining up, all the filters have to be, uh, be satisfied before you can get an alert. And if some of the base filters are right off the, you know, right out of the gates with all the action we've had lately are just really out of whack and that's why you're getting such low trade count now hopefully the next few days things will calm down here and things will uh, return to normal or maybe not but guys i can tell you this just getting back to the market there's not a lot of strategies there's an old uh, i've we said it on here many times before you know a bear, <laughs> i'm not calling it a bear market but we it is bearish price action we've seen the last week okay and it can wipe out both longs and shorts so uh it's a really tough to apply any type of strategy in this kind of market because your emotions are going to take over anyway <laughs> but exactly yep steve unless you have something to add there's, there's just no, not just, a lot to talk about today just the, uh, the ai was just saying i got nothing sit on my yep. hands sit on your hands That's doesn't right. really pretty be much. An edge. big gap never really helps much anyway uh, for the AI, so sometimes the AI is the canary in the coal mine, and it was just quietly sitting there, not doing a whole lot. Yep. Exactly. All right. Take it over. All right. Let me kick it back to you. All right. So we're supposed to go to the the portion of the trade of the week, and you know, as I mentioned, if you read the the article. Uh, email there were just too many to pick from I mean it was just too many and so the basic blush was if we have a strong decent market that opens up on Monday or probably just about everything on something like this pull back to the 50 which is where we found this trade of the week I've got this up for a reason today I'll show you um, pretty much everything on there so a lot more there's the end of it today this was about three twice as long as it was today as it was last friday and so the point again was just come back in and it's really that simple but it never really is that simple and so the uh, the email went on to say the market probably with the way we closed on friday i'll go back to the spiders we're going to find out if this candle up here sitting About the blue late 50 line look in and start buying stuff as they take out it isn't that easy to turn out and so of course what I'm getting at is the GPK did not fire let's go back two days and see what I was seeing two days ago one two there's two days ago um, came back this is again what I wrote about in the ebook um, that has given such winners as ENPH which is doing just fine um, pro also doing doing pretty well, but the same thing's kind of happening in pro, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Just caught that. So back to GPK. My point is, these we're, we're we're pushing through earnings seasons now. So we had some nice earnings in here. We had the gap up. Everybody who bought this price level up here feels like a darn fool. And they're, I'm gonna get stopped out. So that's the anatomy of a losing trade right there. There, where we can sit back and say, well, maybe the second mouse gets the dirt. The thinking of finding stocks in a good trend, with a good gap, 
where the early buyers were a bit early, we come back and fill the gap, which the market, of course, was doing. Um, and then a possible nice move higher. I need to go back and rewind again, just one day. There we go. This is what it looked like on Friday. So had to pick one, pick GPK. But again, the crux of the email was the market's going to dictate whether all these things move higher on Monday and it's like shooting fish in a barrel, or is it going to make things difficult? Well, as we saw again, it made things difficult. The, um, the actual trigger was right there. It was right at the high, just a simple bar. Where that's all we needed was just a little trigger right there. But of course, as we know, the market gap down, took GPK with it. Again, today, kind of mirroring its own respective price action to what the market was doing. So there's nothing to say that it can't in the next day or two possibly trigger. Um, but then again, same thing holds. What is the general market going to be doing uh, to dictate whether or not you stick around in something like that that does trigger? So um, that's really all I can come up with. This, these setups were a dime a dozen, and we figured, you know, since the market had the big pullback, let's go for, you know, something that had a nice pullback and then was moving with the market. We could have gone to the well on maybe an A table trade that was holding up relatively well, but um, we tried we tried something from this list because there were just so many of them. Almost felt like those were the best odds. And one last thing I want to point out, the way in which I was using this. Um, scan and I'm going to use it again later when we set some alerts notice I've got what's called the earnings column here well we do have a lot of pullbacks to the 50 but as we can see from right here I don't want to I don't want to touch those those have earnings coming up in a day two days three six days forget it I'm going to sort them by earnings and I'm going to find the ones who are fresh out of earnings and find them and play with just the ones who have a negative value in the earnings column so we can navigate you know through earnings season it's one of the ways in which you can use that column uh, effectively. All right, so Andy, this brings us to the part where we talk about, you know, how do you survive in high volatile um, situations? And I'll go ahead and, and start. Um, first and foremost, uh, and Andy would make this first and foremost as well, is share size, okay? If you're normally playing 500 shares or something, you're probably going to be just as fine playing 250, 250 shares of the same vehicle in this type of environment. Because if you don't and you jump in there with your normal size, um, you're going to get emotional. You're going to get swung around fast. You're probably going to get whipsawed out. You're going to have it go against you more than likely, more than you care to, only to see it reverse and go high. It just throws off your thinking. And I'll give you a, a real world example. So remember I said we talked about the Dow and the, and the diamonds and how it beautifully textbook bounced off its 200 day with a bit of a bottoming tail well um it has a double etf which moves twice as far and can be good for a day or two or three trading and then get out it's called ddm it's basically the dow but it's a double and um you always want to base your decisions off the underlying dow okay because the ddm has a little different look to it so yesterday at the close or near the close actually it's about new a day let's see take a look at when it was decided to buy yeah it was near the close here decided to buy buy um down here uh looking for a possible next day reversal now did i go in and buy a lot of size no i didn't i bought probably half of what would normally buy because the volatility is so strong and there could have been a possibility of a gap down or a gap up but it, it felt right and then what you don't see here is what happened overnight, which is where the real lesson comes in here. You know, if you were watching the futures last night, and if you were really long, it was not a fun evening. But last night, just having half size of something wasn't fun, but it made it a lot easier at dinner time, knowing that the futures were down, you know, percent and a half. And this DDM is probably down another 3% if that's the way the market was going to open the next day. So the point is, you can still play the game with half shot, half size. And um, and it worked out okay, and you know it, it made it a lot easier to stomach, is what I'm saying. And so across the board, this volatility makes your normal share size pattern trading a lot difficult to stomach. So what you can you do? You can't control the price action, you can't control the buyers and sellers, but you can control your share size, and that eventually helps you to control your emotions better. So that's my big sermon for how to navigate these waters until things change. And, Maybe I stole some thunder from you, Andy, but you want to add anything? 
Uh, no, no. Well, obviously, uh, that's I think everybody should do that. And I do the same thing. I like to use these uh, times like this that stocks that, um, you know, may have gotten ahead of themselves, may have had really good earnings. I like the trade of the week. I mean, um, if you want to pull that up, that, that's a great example. And uh, I'm sorry, which one? The trade of the week. Yes. GPK. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, we would love to get the idea situation where you have a nice reversal and explodes back and goes through uh, the 52 week high there, whatever the high that would be if it took out last month's high. But it didn't happen. Does that mean that you can't do anything in this scenario? No, this is a great example. Now, I didn't do this, but I, I have been nibbling on some other things. I mentioned uh, the other day that. Um, uh snapchat was one of them but uh on the gap fill right there you know i th there's nothing wrong with going in and playing like steve says small size you got your price okay it it you know you didn't chase it like steve was saying up there it came back it filled the gap personally i mean i mean perfectly go in and pick up you know 200 300 shares um a lot of the damage has been done Obvious, yes, if we have another 300 point gap down tomorrow, yes, you could get hurt a little bit. Uh, think the odds are slim, you know, after the carnage we saw over the last week. Uh, I mean, honestly, if we if we did have another, we, there's a lot more things wrong than the, than the market. I'm afraid if we had had another, uh, you know, 300 point gap down yesterday, today. But uh, anyway, I love using things like this, and then going back. If you want to pull back up the spiders again, I'll show you a lot of times what what I will do. You know, as long, long as the market is kind of intact, uh, let's and I wouldn't necessarily use a 10 period moving average. That's more of a momentum line. But as long as the market's maybe you know moving uh, above the 20 period there and a nice slope from lower left to upper right, uh, I will just maybe manage my longs. Uh, you know get out, take profits, just normal trading. But once there is a violation of that 20, uh, I mentioned the other day, this is where I, you know, I can get ag aggressive with SDSs or um, uh, like I did say sometimes VIX if there, if I think there's a lot of bang for your buck. Uh, don't do that very often, but, uh, but this is where I'll come in and I'll start really start to hedge and, and hedging with it decent size so i'm able to keep hold on to most of my longs and still make some decent money on the downside so uh those are the jeff two was commenting on earlier there yes what's that that's what jeff was commenting on earlier yeah. there yeah i talked about it last uh, i talked about it last thursday and uh so instead of just bailing out of what could possibly be a really good position that you're in you know yeah just just hedge and and you know cover your you know uh, try to try to cover you know cover your profits or, or your losses that you're taking over in the one that you you really want to be be in without giving up your position uh, because we've all seen it a lot of times what happens you wake up the next morning and it's a huge gap up and and, and you don't want to chase the stock you just sold yesterday so mm -hmm. um, yeah Sometimes you get that perfect perfect entry you just want to look exactly. back on the chart and know that you didn't let that entry go mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of like how I might feel no I'm just kidding mm -hmm. um, but so yeah, yeah that's I'm, but small size, you, I mean, and you can't not get small enough, really. Maybe even, uh, Steve mentioned a half, but uh, you know, and, and when it's really third. nasty, a third, is sometimes 25%, you know. Uh, you can always add. If the market turns, you can always add to your position. All right. True, um, probably add scaling. You can maybe even go to quarter, quarter, um, quarter lots and maybe dip your toe with a quarter, dip your toe with another quarter, and then you're kind of around the half size level. Um, scaling in and scaling out, not to be confused with averaging, averaging losers. You, averaging a loser is taking a full position and then looking at, at it and finding a reason not to get out and talking yourself into averaging to double up to catch up quickly because God forbid it worked for you once and it's ingrained in your mind that it's an option and you know, you're fighting that urge all the time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, one one very key point, okay, when you do, if you want to pull back up uh, GPK again, I, I always, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but uh, yeah. So if you are nibbling, uh, you know, don't if if it goes against you, don't start averaging more. You know, you, you just want to keep your small because I guarantee you, if you start, you, if you'll try to justify by saying, well, this is uh, this is just a one third of an inch, you know, so I can buy more. 
that's not it's not the same reasoning when you're playing a bearish tape okay so take your small position define your stop and yeah don't try to justify it in a bearish tape don't try to to scale in in other words right, it's so okay to it's okay to scale in in a bull market bull, bullish tape but don't try to scale in in a bearish tape or in a volatile tape like we have right now yes exactly it take um, your little size and, yeah yeah so if the, if, the, if the market was working perfectly yeah you could take a chance there number one and then number two, buy. And he's saying that might not be the best idea in a down market or a volatile market. What he's saying is take your shot here, wait, take your lumps down here. It doesn't hurt because it's only a small size. And then tomorrow, if it breaks here, there you go. There is your number two. You're adding there right. as it breaks number two. Con waiting for confirmation in a market that's as uncertain. It's not as guaranteed exactly. as an uptrending market. I hear you. Yep. All right. So there's just some lessons. Lessons to try and navigate difficult volatile markets until things settle back down. You can get a bit more uh, aggressive and, and share sizing and things like that. Oh, somebody wanted to look at a, at a chart. Which was that? Uh, we'll look at that real quick. Mitch, MTCH head earnings after the market. It's trading way up here. So, I mean, I don't know what you do with that. <laughs> oh, yeah. you just... You just, I mean, you, you could easily come in and buy it tomorrow and it dips down and shakes you out and then goes back and does nothing and it's it's, it's like it's either tough. gamble or you don't and I don't like to gamble with these well with that being said I mean it, it is very tough but look at Shaq today I mean I I for one oh, yeah. did not she I did not want to chase it in this market but look at that move now well, obviously this that. one's having a much bigger gap up I mean possibly within what Shaq had exactly that that tiny gap was a gift yeah. I guess to those who were on point and really watching this one closely now exactly of course the, there is the green line which means we set this alert last week but we all know that it's not wise to gamble into earnings so um, I wouldn't have expected anybody to take something no. like that going into earnings home because you just never know that's a total right. just growth growth story there you know people are thinking yeah. it's a chipotle or whatever which is you know i uh, well, i gotta tell you i fed them i fed the monkey 13 bucks on sunday <laughs> <laughs> I, I walked over to utc for my second uh, round and uh and their burgers are pretty good they, they are good they good are good they've yeah. got a different flavor but you know they're paying utc rent over there at that mall it's a very expensive location a very high-end mall and uh anyway it was fun. I enjoyed it. All right. Um, let's see. I'm going to go in and uh, where, where are we going next? I think we're going to talk about um, we did adapting to volatility. Yeah, we're, I'm going to find some alerts. Now, you know, there's no point in really going through the alerts that happened on the mall. I mean, they're all going to look the same. Green triggered and then just phew, horrible. Um, we have a different market, possibly. I'm not saying we do. We have possibly have a different market backdrop this week than we do last. So therefore, um, I brought up, again, the old pullback to the 50, and there's a lot of interesting things on here. And again, I'm only going to focus on the ones that are post-earnings, which would be everything in blue there. All right. So oh, uh, I've got 10 of them. By the way, let's go ahead and take a look. And I did double check for earnings this time. The first one... Um, is coming off earnings. This is probably one of the more squirrely ones of all three of them. Mm. Uh, I like the way it closed up today. It's 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 trying to paint itself into uh, for the most part. That's kind of what I'm seeing. So, um, where would you put an entry on this one? Or you could do it. You could do a channel. Uh, it's a channel kind of down. Yeah. Where it's it's like, a, right. like a bullish. Yeah, yeah. There I'm, you go. I'm, I'm going to use trade ideas technology, and I'm going to use that blue line right there, mm -hmm. and that's going to be our trigger. Channel break, channel flag. Now, guys, once again, a biotech. So be careful if you well, hold this. Well, I, I looked at that. I looked at that, and it's it's still manufacturing. It's they're 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 not producing um, product in terms of FDA, right. I think, approval of uh, chemical manufacturing. Well, you know what, Lawnmower Man didn't disappoint me. Let me put you on mute for a second and close the window. Pharmaceutical and medicine man factoring so hang on one second yeah don't listen to him it's a biotech
but still, yes. Very good to remind people that biotechs can be a bit nasty <laughs> overnight. Uh, the next one, and this is coming again from the uh, A table, so these are coming from uh, that one, IPHI. Steve, IPHI, there we go. So this one had earnings probably a couple of days ago, yep, and we can see a lot of volatility. Um, I mean, good relative you know, strength. Yeah. I was just, you took the word out of my mouth. Great relative strength. Um, do we do a head start of today's high or a breakout of all-time highs? You think? Take a look at how it closed there. I'm gonna do today's highs. Yeah. Might come back trigger too soon, but it's a volatile market. Let's. All right, let me zoom out a little bit. Uh, ACAD. All right. Um, obviously, earnings, this had news, and then it had earnings this day. So it's shucked its bad news, blasted its earnings, and hasn't given much back again. That's, uh, oh, that's a nice flag, isn't it? Isn't it? I know. I'm just trying to figure out where to put it. I don't think you're gonna right. miss. Much. I don't think you're gonna miss much with either one. Uh, you know, yeah. So 29, 26. Again, the idea is a nice flag, relative strength. All right, still on the A table here. We're gonna to go to A Y X. Another flag dancing on top of the uh, dancing doji is dancing on top of the. Uh, 10 period, I would just use today's high. So we're gonna use uh, 50 cents, 50 cent. And then two more from this batch, MEDP. I would have liked if that bottoming tail had actually touched that moving average today, it didn't. But nonetheless, trade ideas is drawing where I would put the line as well right there at the highs of today's candle. 84. And the last one from our A table is X. This, believe it or not, is still on the A table. It doesn't look like some of the others. It looks more like, you know, pull back, back to the 50, but it is on there. Um, nonetheless, I'm pretty sure. Let me just double check. Nope, this one had to have been from the other scan. So we're over on the uh, pull back to the 50 now. Um, again, same kind of an idea as GPK, you know, um, people who bought the uh, earnings, I'm just overlay them, GPK and X, gap up after earnings, come back, fill the gap, got down toe of the market. You know what? I'm not liking this one upon second glance. I'm not quite sure why I included that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to scratch that one. I don't like moving averages there. It's just too jumbled and the score is way lower than I thought it was. So only a 46 score. So we're going to move over now to the pullback above the 50 and only focused on stocks that have had earnings. And uh, the first one is going to be we've, a name we've seen before, Chegg. Mm -hmm. um, earnings day, of course, right there. Everybody that bought has now coughed up their shares more than likely. Um, I'd like to see it get it back above yesterday's high, which was uh, 78. Oops. All right. Seven, not bad. Uh-uh. Uh, um, Mattel, a name that's been around forever. Mattel Toys. There's your, there's your earnings. Everybody that got hosed after earnings, it's now recovering. Um, it just doesn't look bad. It looks like I might want to continue. Yeah. Not, not very volatile, just kind of a slow mover. Um, a low price, too. So 12.94. And um, I guess that's INT. Let's see, interception. Yep, that would be one. So same thing, earnings. Hopefully a second mouse might get a better chance here. Um, that's an interesting, I'm gonna go ahead and just put it above today's highs. Get a bit aggressive on this one. Uh, 23 is what we want. 
Now there's a chance that all these could go off right at the bell if we have a big gap up. I know. Oh, well. Well, remember that that's the case, and you know, smaller size volatility yep. is out there. Some of these are probably going to trigger. Mm -hmm. Let's see, um, and then the last one, I guess it's TMUS. Is that right? Interesting. It is interesting. It really got ahead of itself, and then, boy, it really made it painful for the people that mm -hmm. bought that breakout. So I, that's kind of the play I try to look at. You know, what's the safe entry? Is this the safe entry to buy up here? In hindsight, uh, certainly not. But even in non-hindsight, you shouldn't be looking at those charts and saying, saying right here where, shoot. <laughs> try this again. Saying, yeah, I got, I got to buy this right here. Look at that. Look at that breakout. I got to buy this. No, you're missing the boat. You got to identify these things down here and, and, and be ready for those moves. You're, you're late to the party there. And so we're going to try and exploit the late to the party people. So the high of this candle is 33. And then we'll share this alert and bring Scott in for any more announcements. If anybody has a chart they want to look at, we can do that too. As I shore up these, oh, that one triggered, didn't it? Okay, so we will, I've got some work to do as well. Let's delete these and start over. Do TMUS again. Uh, TMUS is trading up here after hours. Let's just take a look and see if that's oh, a single tick or if there's some news there. Go to properties, post market. It's a single tick. So no matter where I set it, where uh -huh. I want to set it, it's going to trigger. So you guys might want to have to just add that TMUS maybe tomorrow yeah. or whatever. You scratch it down on a piece of paper because this isn't going to work the way I want to share it like that. So I'm going to share eight. And again, if somebody wants to look at a chart or two, we can do that. Uh, price alerts. Molly, the single tick is just uh, one print, just basically probably a bad print in after hours. Yeah. Yeah. And it's throwing off. It's, it's showing the after hours price at 78.70. And if I set an alert at 78, it's still going to go off. All right, so G O L Armando wants to look at gold. Huh. Probably has a decent score. Oh no, 67. So the fundamentals probably aren't that great on it. Or oh, there we go. Now the chart has come into in, in, into play here. Well, actually, why does it have a low score? Fundamentals might not be that great. Let me look at But the uh, the technicals, um, you know. I liked it a couple of days ago, probably like everything else would, Armando. But what I see right here is a failure to get back above these two moving averages. Um, we want to get back above those to get back under control. Right now, you're kind of playing defense between this red line drawn by the trade ideas chart, which corresponds to these back here, and kind of the, hot, the top end there. This is your range right now, 2014 to uh, whatever that is up there. Um, let's see. Whoops. Uh, about 2130. 2010 it's a guess in here right now so i don't really know what to tell you it doesn't look great it's just kind of waiting to figure out what it wants to do that's what i'm seeing um and i guess that's probably about it so yeah that's all i got unless you want to add anything andy we'll bring scott back in nope uh i'm ready to go bring him in all right let's do it let's uh bring up my slideshow here and Scott's going to talk about test drive, back to school test drive. All right. That's right. And everyone's getting ready for school. So uh, y'all can too by registering for the test drive and experience Trade Ideas Premium, all the features, including Brokerage Plus, the AI, back testing, all of that for five days with special instructional webinars every day. So uh, go to trade ideas.com slash test drive. It's under nine bucks, five days. The, um, $8.99 covers your exchange fees, uh, any increase for the data, and also the extra support that we're using to cover for the week. Um, you have until next Wednesday to sign up, but we recommend signing up before this weekend because it starts on Monday, and that way you'll be equipped for all the special webinars and sessions and everything, and you get five trading days. Um, so don't miss out. Uh, we have a podcast. We put new ones out just about weekly. You can subscribe to it by searching for Trade Ideas Podcast in your favorite podcast app. And uh, then you're ready to hear the new ones. And you can check out the back issues, too. There's some good ones back there. Um, we have a new series of ebooks. You can get all three for free. 
Each one's organized by topic, and there's two chapters in each. Steve and Andy each contributed some chapters, so do check it out. It's free, trade-ideas.com slash setup. Just put in your email address to go to the download links and uh, enjoy. Uh, you can, for now, you can still use, I was going to update that code, but uh, until next week, you can use July highs. Uh, I was going to put in August heat, but uh, I didn't quite get that in there during the webinar. So um, use July highs this week uh, to save 15% off the first month of year of trade ideas. And uh, this code will be dead next week. So take advantage of it while it still works. You can also use this if you're a standard subscriber to do an upgrade. You can follow Steve on Twitter at Today Trader. We also have at Trade Ideas, at QuantBot, some other handles. Uh, Trade Ideas Pro is the Facebook uh, account to follow and uh, share stuff with your friends. But if you have any questions, email your questions to info at trade-ideas.com. That's the place to send everything because it goes into our help desk software. Uh, thanks, Steve. Thanks, Andy. Thank you all for attending. And we'll get a recording up later on tonight or tomorrow, and you get an email reminder about how to find it once it's available. Thanks, guys. Thanks. See you next time.